Hello and welcome back. It has been several months since I have recorded a podcast and there is so much to catch up on. Anyway, this is Becky Thomas Iyer and as some of you know, I started this podcast over a year ago calling it The Unexpected Life because I have lived it. In my 50s, I got married for the first time, so just one and a half years ago, and I married the man of my dreams, Daryl Iyer. However, my life did not start when I met Daryl, but long before, and throughout my life, I have lived and learned a lot. Like I've said before, on the good days you live and on the bad days you learn, and I have done both. I'm so glad that I didn't wait until I got married to start living. It can be easy to go to that place of when I get married or when I have children or when I get a real job or when I graduate before we start living and loving the journey that we're on. I've had an incredible life and marriage just added to that. So this podcast has been part of this incredible journey. I retired from my job of running a swim school with my mom, one that she started 59 years earlier. Together, we grew it to the largest seasonal swim school in the world, trained over 600 employees, and maintained a standard of excellence and integrity second to none. That, to me, is the greatest accomplishment of all, not how big it was, but how my mom set the bar so high many years ago and never wavered, even in this ever-changing world that we live in. This was a powerful lesson and an amazing environment for me to grow in. I have learned a lot over the years from the lessons of running that business, as well as living and thriving in the unexpected life. And so with that, I decided to do a podcast to share some of the things that I have learned that have not only brought incredible happiness, but have made a powerful difference in my life. So I am just trying to pass on some of these little gems in hopes that it helps even one person. Well, first off, let me explain the picture that I posted with this podcast. Over six months ago, Daryl and I were asked to be involved in something called Trek. Let me quickly explain what this is. As you know, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We have a rich heritage of early saints or members of the church who were seeking religious liberties as well as unity or strength in numbers, and they were willing to leave their big, beautiful homes, family members, and a language and a country they loved in places like England, Sweden, Norway, or Denmark to come to America and more specifically to Utah. Well, in order to do this, They sold everything, hopped on a ship, not a nice luxury cruise line, but they were crammed on a ship and sailed for six weeks to New York. But they didn't mind. They were driven by purpose and wanted nothing more than to provide a more stable religious upbringing for their children. And then they hopped on a train, not one with seats and a bathroom, but one that was used for cattle. But they didn't mind. They were driven by a purpose, a purpose much bigger than themselves. And they rode the train to Iowa City, Iowa. And then once they got there, they had to learn how to build a hand cart and learn how to rough it. And 20 days later, they started their journey on foot to Utah. They had purpose in their steps. And as you'll recall in podcast five, when we have purpose, we are willing to do hard things. Well, there were many hand carts, companies that walked to Utah, and they made it. But there were two, the Willie and Martin hand cart companies that left so late in the season that many of those people froze or starved to death because of storms and harsh weather. They were eventually rescued in Wyoming, but not before making major sacrifices and experiencing great loss. And that is their story in a nutshell. But really, there are many stories within that story. Stories of commitment, perseverance, miracles, endless compassion, and incredible faith. The kind of stories that warm the heart and remind us of a people who were driven by purpose and had great character. So Trek is when some of the members of the church now 
choose to reenact what these pioneers went through in hopes to gain an appreciation of their faith and sacrifice and hopefully to be inspired by them. So this is what we did. We spent four days in Wyoming with about 250 teenagers and 100 adults where these early saints were eventually rescued. And we pulled hand carts just like they did and we put all of our belongings, 17 pounds to be exact, in a bucket, the same amount of weight that they were allowed to take, and we started walking. However, unlike the pioneers, we ate like kings and slept in tents that protected us from the thunderstorms and lightning and rain that we did encounter. It was awesome. We even wore the same style of clothes that these saints did, like in the picture I posted. We really wanted to get a feel for what these saints went through so that we could try to appreciate their journey and sacrifice. Well, Daryl and I were asked to be responsible for all the stories that were told along the way. As these teenagers walked and pulled hand carts, they would occasionally stop and listen to a true story about their early saints. One that usually included the death of a loved one, losing frozen limbs, having to chip away the ice to pass through a frozen river only to die on the other side, or carrying a sibling on their back until they died. But always these stories included compassion. Because what we learned is that in spite of all their suffering and loss, they never put their needs ahead of the others in their company. They would barely make it to camp at night, sometimes using their last bit of energy to dig a grave for someone that they lost that day, and then notice that wolves were howling and surrounding a body that was emaciated and ready to die, and they would return to the trail to rescue and bring that person into camp. They would give their last meal or blanket to care for someone else at the risk of dying or freezing themselves. Their compassion knew no bounds. It was amazing. And it was all because they had purpose. That made all the difference in the world. Well, Daryl and I and our committee were also responsible for the activities, such as square dancing and activities on the bus and things like that. Anyway, needless to say, we have been preoccupied with this assignment for the past six months, and it was so worth it. To see these young people leave the world, leave their gaming, leave their iPhones, leave their social media, and all their luxuries of home, and just forget about themselves was incredible. To see them square dancing and laughing and uninhibited was so refreshing. To see them help and pull others along the way who twisted their ankle, who hurt their back, and to care for them was what any parent or adult dreams of these days. It was one of those experiences that the youth and the adults will talk about for a long time. I guarantee you that they will refer to the time that they went on trek a lot more often than the time they went to Hawaii or on a cruise because it pushed them. It brought something out in them. It stretched them and it changed them. So with this in mind and with the fact that I am now finishing my first year of teen life coaching, I have a few thoughts that I would like to share. First of all, I have learned firsthand that it is the struggle in life that grows us, that builds confidence and character, that takes us out of ourselves, and that teaches compassion. And it is the purpose that motivates us to struggle. Personally, I feel that many of our youth have been robbed. I worry that with all the wealth and privileges and opportunities that our young people have been given, that our youth have seriously been robbed. The strength and character and confidence and sense of accomplishment that, would, that they would have gained if they had to work and struggle and pay a price for those privileges and opportunities, something that gives deep and powerful purpose to their lives, have been taken from them by the easiness of the way. And not all the money or opportunity or privileges in the world 
can buy them character or confidence. It appears that some believe that giving their kids so much, therefore taking away the struggle, but instead think that by talking or teaching lessons about character or confidence that they can still get it. But that is simply not true. We cannot share enough stories or build them up enough or lower the bar enough so that they can easily jump over it and expect them to stand confidently and strong. I'm talking about the character that can only come when we do hard things and the confidence that can only come when they've paid a price on their own. There is a character built and a confidence gained in simply doing hard things. There is no substitute for hard things. We trained over 600 employees at our swim school, and I did most of that training. Most swim schools hired competitive swimmers as their employees, but not us. We hired for character, and then we trained the skill. We know that athletes often had great knowledge and discipline from their sport, but there is even more character that we needed in order to work at the swim school. Yes, many of our employees were athletes and were college-bound with scholarships, but we needed more character than that, which is why we hired the ones that we did. Showing up to a job early and ready to hit the ground running, being accountable and responsible to a boss, having integrity, doing some things they didn't want to do, like cleaning toilets or waiting on customers that were difficult, working late or inconvenient hours, dealing with others who made their job harder, and being teachable. One of the most important things that we looked for was someone who had to work. Regardless how wealthy their parents were, we loved the fact that their parents didn't take away the struggle, and they had to pay for things on their own. Those employees were our best workers, They didn't quit when things got hard or if they just wanted a change. They learned to work through hard times. They became resilient because they had purpose. They had to pay for their tuition, their transportation, or their study abroad, or whatever they wanted. So they stuck it out when things were hard. Their purpose got them through hard and difficult times. And through all that, they built character and confidence that they could do anything. During those 59 years, our employees had a lot of challenges to face while they were working with us. Some had parents going through a divorce. Many got sick. A lot of them went home to an empty house at night because their family was on vacation, but they couldn't get the time off work, and they still had a good attitude about it. They worked 10 hours a day. They had to smile 10 hours a day and keep a great attitude 10 hours a day. They were sunburned and exhausted daily, and yet they did it. They were amazing. Not too long ago, my mom received a letter from one of our employees that we had 30 years ago. Her parents were divorcing that summer, and she would come to work sad and weepy. My mom sat her down and told her that as sad as that was, it was not fair to her, her swimmers, or the other employees who were also having struggles of their own, and that she would need to leave those emotions at home and come to work with a good attitude and give it her all. Now, 30 years later, she sent my mom a letter after raising four kids of her own, thanking my mom for sitting her down that summer and teaching her one of the greatest lessons of life. Now, that is just one letter And my mom has received many letters and countless visits over the years of former employees expressing that same gratitude. Can you imagine if my mom said that to an employee today? How would they respond? How would their mom respond? I think we might see a whole different scenario. And then we'd wonder why our young people are having such a hard time just dealing with day-to-day life why they get overwhelmed and quit and give up. The character and confidence that the, that the much-needed sense of accomplishment comes with doing hard things. It comes with having a struggle. Conquering the next level of gaming or getting a zillion likes on social media does not build confidence. There is no substitute to hard work, 
long hours, and struggle. Unfortunately, with the wealth of our society, parenting has changed. Now, don't get me wrong. I love money. I love the opportunities that money brings. But when it changes the way we parent, so much so that we rob our kids of character by not requiring them to work, and I mean work hard, then we grow a problem that is bigger than ourselves. We become part of the problem instead of part of the solution. Generally speaking, we have a society that cannot do hard things, that play the role of a victim and who blame others for their lack of character. I remember when I was in the eighth grade and my dad told me and my brothers that we could go to Hawaii in a year, but that we would have to pay our own plane ticket of $350. I'm guessing that my parents could afford to pay for that trip, but there was no way they were going to rob us of the struggle, the sacrifice, confidence, joy, and the purpose it would give us to work and save and pay to go to Hawaii. It was so awesome, and in fact, we did it again the next year. Well, Trek has been a great reminder to me of the importance of having purpose, struggle, and compassion in our lives. Purpose that motivates us to do hard things. Struggle so we can grow character and confidence. And with that, compassion will follow. It just does. It's one of the fruits of people with character. I have been life coaching some of the brightest and best people I have ever met. And it breaks my heart when they're sad or depressed or feel less than. They all have so much, which only reminds me that so much is not what makes us happy or confident. I was just telling Daryl yesterday what this podcast was about. And we were talking about a friend of ours who is building a multi-million dollar home. And Daryl asked me if I thought that this guy's kids could grow character and confidence in such luxury? Well, my answer was, if his parents will create and allow struggle for the kids. I truly believe this. There's nothing wrong with having so much, but when we take away the struggle, that is when we rob our kids of the character that they need to be resilient and confident. You know, Daryl and I have been on several trips since we've been married, and going to Trek was the only one that we came home and just wept. We were filthy and sore and achy and so tired, but we drew closer and bonded in a way that those other luxurious trips couldn't do. It was the struggle that brought us close, not lounging on a Hawaiian beach. There is value in the struggle. Well, thank you for listening. I just hope that this gives us all something to think about. Daryl and I have grandkids, and we want nothing more than for them to be people of character, people who can face hard things, people who appreciate the sacrifices of others, people who are gracious and are driven by purpose. We would love to show them the world, but we don't want to rob them of the character that comes with the struggle either. It's a balancing act, but hopefully this can give us all something to think about. I know that we're all just trying to do our best, and that's all that really matters. There's no judgment here. We just want to do what's best for us and for those in our lives. Well, I have more on my mind, so I will be returning, but thanks so much for listening, and I hope that you have a great day.